The release of Queensland Cabinet minutes from 30 years ago reveals the state undergoing tremendous change. But history has a habit of repeating, with 1983 marked by drought, floods and political upheaval. Francine Norton reports. It's a parched landscape that seems to transcend time in Queensland, but this was 1983, and the year began with more than 50 shires in drought. But until you actually get out here and see it for yourself, you can't begin to understand how bad it really is. Drought soon turned into flooding rains, but as they've done before and since, Queenslanders took it in their stride. Politics in Queensland was just as tumultuous. The Premier, Joe Bielke-Peterson, dismissed the leader of the Liberal Party, Terry White. There's no doubt now that the National Party are now on a course of a pursuit for absolute power. And if you're not loyal, yeah, don't fit into the Belka peters and Edwards government, the coalition government. Other Liberal ministers resigned, two defected, sparking a political crisis. The day began with the final clearing out of their offices. Democracy has to try to be introduced in this state. I think they're mad. You know, there's no other way to describe them. When the dust settled, the Liberals had been banished to the political wilderness and Queensland voters handed the National Party half the seats in the state. No problem, we will be a government in our own right. Then member for Flinders Bob Catter made his debut on the front bench as Minister for Northern Development and Aboriginal and Island Affairs. I really do think that my best qualification is that uh, I played uh, rugby league for about 21 years in north and western Queensland and uh, it's very hard to sort of feel superior to some bloke after he's flattened you eight or nine times in a football match. He was also a strong advocate for the Bradfield scheme, which Cabinet accepted in principle. So we're going to dig a big hole through that range and we're going to dam those rivers. One day if I said in my lifetime my children might see it. It never went ahead. But true to the Bielke-Peterson mantra, Queensland grew. Four electricity generation projects were underway and approval was given for casinos on the Gold Coast and Townsville. The, the government of 1983 was one that, that was very active in making things happen for Queensland. But inflation and wage demands also happened as unemployment reached 11.5%. But old prejudices against Indigenous communities and gay and lesbian people prevailed. And in 1983, an emerging virus called AIDS was declared a notifiable disease. I think very little risk of a major epidemic. Technology was also beginning to shape Queensland, with almost 600 computers in schools. It was the shape of things to come. Francine Norton, ABC News.